This is Dr. Servo. It's a, um, it's a tool for doing some diagnostics on your servos, trying to measure the speed, doing some cycle counting, and also does some things that allows you to hook it up to the transmitter. I'm going to cover some of the basics here. And the first thing that I found was that this was very sensitive to the power that you give it. And uh, first off, let me show you. Comes in this little box here. I got this from hobbyparts.com and it comes with instructions and everything in the box. And the instructions were a little bit hard to understand, so I'm going to try to go through uh, some of the stuff here. But the basic connection is you've got a power supply. Okay, so what I did is I hooked up a 9 volt battery. It seems to really like 9 volts better than anything else. It's got an internal 9 volt to I think about 8 point something volt regulator in it. And the power goes on the first two pins up here. And what I've got is a JST connector. That seems to fit in there the best. Um, I was somewhat able to get a regular servo power connector in there. Um, but to really fit it in there properly, I would have had to like gouge out the plastic there. The next thing is the gyro. This actually has a little gyro built into it. And this is used for doing the uh, speed test of the servo. You're going to want to have the brown wire down. Then there's a harness. Okay. And let me get this here. Try to show you that. This harness is how you hook up servos to it and it's sort of like a Y harness and the end that hooks up to the Dr. Servo has got this component soldered in there into the, and shrink wrapped okay and if you open it a little bit you'll see that one end of this is black that end there is the minus that goes down it goes on this side okay so when you plug that in plug it in like that and then you can hook up up to three servos at a time to this and you would hook up three servos when you're doing like a cycle test um, something like that otherwise uh, what you could do is hook up one servo and a separate power supply what I've done to actually power my servo and that, so that I can change the voltage is I have I have a speed controller here and it has a built-in BEC and it has a jumper on it so that I can select whether it be 5 volts or 6 volts. And you take the output from that BEC and you actually can plug it into one of the three servo ends. And then that is going to power just the servo. Okay, This circuit that is inside here isolates whatever voltage you put into here from the doctor servo. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, um, the menu here and it's kind of hard to focus in on this little screen but I'll do the best that I can. Um, it's got a, a button here and it's actually more than just a single push button. You can actually push it up okay, and you can push it down. Okay, When I push it down it turns on and off the backlight. Okay. You can push it right and you can push it left. Okay. Now, in the case of this, this screen right here, this is for testing the servo speed. If I push it to the left, it makes that value there go down. So it says 574. If I push it to the right, it makes the that value go up. Okay. If I um, if I want to do the uh, servo speed test, which I'll do now, this range here is the time increment for uh, 60 degrees and uh, well, I'm going to hook this up and show you how uh, to do that speed test. Okay, I'm going to do the speed test. I've got a high speed tail servo hooked up here and I've got a printout of the protractor. The manual actually comes with a protractor in it. You can either cut that out or you can copy it. I just went and googled the word protractor for images and found this and what I've got is piece of foam tape on top of the servo and I've marked out here 60 degrees okay these two black marks here and I'm trying to basically put this paper down so that the center of the servo is the center of the protractor okay and I'm starting off aligning here it looks about right okay 
And what I want to do is, I've got everything hooked up. I have my servo hooked up into the harness. I have my power supply here of, for the servo with a BEC, and that's hooked up into the harness. And to start off with, I've taken the gyro, okay, and I've just shoved it under this piece of foam where I have the servo mounted. So I'm gonna make it so that the gyro does not move at all, okay? And when I run the test, it's gonna move 60 degrees and stop, okay? It's actually running the test, but it's failing because it doesn't sense the gyro moving. So I've actually found that's an easy way compared to how they describe it in the manual to, to figure out the, the value here that you need to set uh, in order to get 60 degrees. So it says range equals 635 microseconds. If I say found that the value was, that this movement was too little, I can then change it Okay, so I actually bumped it up. Let's say I started with 710. When I push the button, you can see it goes actually further than the 60 degrees. So I'll bump that back down. Okay, I'll make that say 500, and 500 microseconds. Now, okay, let me realign that. Okay, that's too short. Okay, so once again, the value that I had for this particular servo, and each servo can be different for how much spacing and in the, in the, in the, the range of the um, spacing change is attributed to 60 degrees. Each servo is going to be a little bit different. Okay, that's one of the reasons why tail servos will, um, will differ from one brand to the other, not just because of their speed, but the gain can change because the microsecond for 60 degrees will alter from one to the other, okay? Get that aligned. Okay. It's hard to see from the camera, but it is moving 60 degrees. Okay, sometimes it does bounce around a little bit when I move the gyro underneath. Okay, so it, it is moving 60 degrees when I do that test. Okay, now I've got this pretty well aligned. I got my spacing right, and it is now moving 60 degrees when I do the test. I've hooked up the gyro onto that little piece of, uh, I got foam tape, and then this is a wire tie. I put the gyro on there, and it's facing up, so it's got like a little uh, swirly mark on there. That's facing up. If your, if your servo moves clockwise, okay, in this direction when you run the test, you want to have that little symbol, um, that swirly symbol facing up. If for some reason your tail servo is opposite direction where when you run the test it moves counterclockwise, you can do everything but you have to turn that gyro upside down. So I'm going to push the button. So what it does is it moves 60 degrees, comes back, then it moves 30 degrees and comes back. And that's how it measures the speed. So on the screen here, this is a little hard to see, but it shows two times. Okay, T1, it says 140 um, milliseconds. T2, 10.3 milliseconds. Then it shows the, at the bottom T, 74 milliseconds. So that's 0.074. So typically you see speed for servos in, in, in a value, a decimal based on a second. So 74 milliseconds would correspond to in the spec of. 0.074 seconds. Okay, so that's how fast this servo is moving. And if you do this test a couple times, the value is going to change. I'm seeing values anywhere from the 0.074 up to like 0.08. Okay, now if I go over to my battery eliminator circuit here and I'm going to change it from 5 volts to 6 volts. Okay, then I'm going to run that test again. You can see it's actually moving faster. Now the values are uh, 69, 74, 78. Okay, I like to take a, a, a test of about 10 times. 65 is pretty low. And then compare those numbers, sort of take an average, and that's the speed of the servo.